So another Patreon Q&A. Thank you again, Patreons, so much for your support and for your questions. Um, if you are not a Patreon, come join us on Patreon. Come join us on the Patreon Discord channel for a lovely community and monthly challenges with giveaways. And I would like to thank Path Set for donating his commercial collections um, for the monthly giveaways on Discord. So thank you so much. Um, let's start. So the first question is coming from Derek. Hi Derek, since you enjoy using Veli's Plateau so much indeed, I'd love to see you turn it into a gated reverb if you haven't done so before. I'm curious to see how you would achieve this. Um, so I just released a quick tip video about exactly this, about uh, ga um, gating a reverb with Plateau. Um, so I will put a link to this in the description. And there is also another um, video on Patreon, a full video about um, using Plateau more as a sound design tool um, and not only as a send reverb. So if you're interested, again, links, I will put links in the description and also on Patreon. Um, but let me quickly show you how you can do this. Um, right, so here I have a kick, hi-hat and snare. Um, gate sequencer is sequencing tremor 2, kick and hi-hat, and tremor 1 is the snare. Right, and you can see a uh, tremor 1, or this uh, snare sound, let me solo it maybe, is going through plateau. For now it's all the way dry, but if I bring in the wet amount. Right, basically we get this reverb. It has lots of decay, that's why it's like resonating a bit. Right, but now there is the clear function that I can use to clear the buffer. Right, and I can trigger it, or I can use also a gate or a trigger, right, to trigger this and by that basically get a gated reverb effect. So I have here another row on uh, the gate sequencer that I'm going to use. Right. And I got basically a gated reverb, again, just by using the clear function on Plateau. Right, of course, this can work also on melodic voices. So here I have board L, sequencing energy. All of the patches will be available also on Patreon to download if you're interested and you want to download them. Right, um, energy again through plateau in this case, but I'm using a Euclidean sequencer, so a different sequencer to trigger the clear function, right, just to get more interesting results. Let's solo this. Right. You can get rhythmic results by gating this clear function. Right, now you can also do this in a different way, um, sort of like side-chaining the reverb. The thing is, the positive thing about the clear function is that it will remove everything from the buffer, so you start every time new, which can be uh, much cleaner. But you can also side-chain the reverb like I'm doing here. I have here a sort of a clap with noise, basically. Right, and again, this is going through plateau. A copy of this is going to plateau, and I'm side-chaining plateau with an inverted envelope, right? So basically I have here an envelope that I'm inverting and it will sound like this, right? Again, just to get rhythmic results, so everything together will sound like this. The next one is from Tomas. Hi Tomas, I remember you used to have a video about Steve Reich's music techniques applied to VC VREC. Um, yes, it's unlisted because it's, it was just uh, not, uh, too old and uh, most modules were not available anymore, but I will revisit it indeed and we'll make a new one. I've been listening to a lot of music for 18 musicians this last month and I wanted to make some patches inspired by it. I would love to hear your insights and ideas, even a full video on these techniques. Thank you. Thank you for your support. And um, so yes, a, a full video will come for sure because it's uh, really interesting, but I can show you two techniques, two phasing techniques, basically having um, two voices that are coming in and out of phase um, which is basically um, what phasing is all about, right? So the first one I have here is with the sequencer. So I have two identical voices, right? 
16 step sequencer sequencing the FM operator and I have a oct that we will use later on. Now it sounds like this, stereo, but because it's exactly the same voice, you hear the same left and right, so it sounds in the middle. Right now those are 16 steps and already what you can do, you can set one sequencer to have 15 steps, right? So it will play once and then every cycle it will be um, basically offset by one step and this can get really interesting. So let me change this now to 15. Aha! Right, and then after 15 times it will be the same. Let's wait for it. Maybe we won't wait for it, maybe it's longer. Is it one more? Is it two more? I, I'm not so sure anymore. No, anyway, it will take a longer time for it to... Ah, I think the next one. Right, and then again it will be offsetted. Or offset. Offsetted? Is it offsetted the word? Let's add also this modulation from Oct, just to have a, a bit more movement in left and right. Right? So like this you can create phasing effect. Of course this is just 16 steps. Imagine when you have a 64 step sequence. So you have 164, 163. Amazing. Uh, it will take so long for them to sync up again, um, which can be quite, quite interesting. And another, um, another technique you can use it with is with LFOs. Right, so here I have two LFOs set to four, let's 4.4 Hertz exactly. I can reset everything. Right, so they are set again exactly the same. This works in VCV rec better because you can have exact values. And again, it's exactly the same voice already with the modulation set, but they are running basically now at the same rate, so it should sound like one voice in the center. But now I'm going to have one LFO set just a bit quicker than the first LFO, slowly, slowly, they will start phasing in and out of each other. So this was 4.4, so this will be 4.45, let's say. Right? can make this even slower, of course, 4.41. Right, but you see already they are starting to phase out and you get two different voices or the same voice playing basically out of phase. Right, so this is another technique. Um, again, I hope that it will uh, be soon that I will make a new video about this because there are amazing techniques that you can use also in hardware quite nicely. Um, that's it. Okay, this one is from Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Thanks a lot for all your work. Thank you for the support. It helps me a lot using VCV and my Eurorack together. Perfect. My question is about Gate Sequencer 64 by Improp2. I am struggling with advanced gate feature uh, trigger and gate length. Would you a bit elaborate on how to use the uh, gate type buttons? As per pictogram, I assume that we can use a variable type of gates. However, I manage only to set probability. I wonder if we can change gate type per trigger. So yes, let me show you how this works. Basically, there are uh, the so-called advanced uh, gate modes on the gate sequencer. Right, so here I have it going with the normal clock, triggering the FM operator. Right, and now I want to add 
these gates here, right? I can add triplets, I can add sorts of uh, ratchets, I can move the gates back and forth. Now for this, we need a higher clock resolution, which means that now the clock resolution is each step is one gate, is one uh, um, PPQN, pulses per quarter note, it's one. It's one pulse per quarter note, per clock, it will move one step forward. Now we need more than this because if you want one um, one step to have three pulses inside, right? We have to use a larger PPQN. So let's first of all get in the modes. So you see here it says length mode and it says hold for clock resolution. Now have a look. If I click and hold it, right? We go now in the clock modes. Now it's again multiplied by one which means that it's one PPQN. Again, I will have to hold and click because it goes out of it. Right, if I go to two or to four, actually you see there are some lights here turning on, which means that when I'm in four PPQN, in four a clock resolution of four PPQN, I can use these modes here. Now to use this four PPQN, we have to use a higher clock resolution with the clock. You can see now the sequencer runs quite slowly actually four times slower, right? Which means that if we choose a clock resolution of four, we have to use also a quicker clock, a clock of multiplied by four. And now we will have the same speed as before, but we can start adding these gates here, right? So I can choose, for example, this note and choose this gate. Let's see what happens, right? So now instead of playing one pulse, it played two. Right, I can also move. Right, so this will be the default. Right, and then I can move it instead that it will play on the first half, it will play on the second half. Right, so let's do it for this one. Right. Right, so it played instead of playing the first half it played the second half right and then another note so it sounds again like two notes or two hits right now what if you want to use the other ones the other gates modes well, they are triplets which means that you need a clock resolution that will divide by three so if it's 6 12 24 and so on 24 maybe not 24 <laughs> no 24 as well yeah because it's 2 times 12 right so you have four if i go to six you see the these light up but those turned off because you cannot use them because you need a clock resolution of eight or four and so on so the best will be to have a clock resolution of 12 right because then all of them are on but again now you have to use a clock multiplication of 12 because you have a higher clock resolution so you have clock resolution of 12 and now here for example i can add a triplet Right, I can choose it. Right, instead of one pulse, it played three in the length of one. Again, we have a higher clock resolution, which means that we have more pulses per step. You can um, add, you can insert more pulses, like three pulses instead of one, right, with a clock resolution of 12. Now, usually I don't use, in, in this case, I'm using uh, it was uh, multiplied by one clock, the original run, uh, right? Usually I use a multiplied by two or multiplied by four. So what if you want now to use a multiplied by four? You have to multiply this by four, which will be 48. Right? Or multiplied by two, which will be 24. Right, let's add another voice here. I have here also kick all. Right, and let's enter a few notes. Right, and then here, for example, I can add again something like this. And maybe here another double pulse. Right, maybe have. Right. So again, you click and hold, you choose the clock resolution. In my opinion, 12 is the best because you have all of the lights. 
and then it, and then you have to multiply the clock if you multiply it by 12 you get basically a multiplied by one clock if you multiply it by 24 you get a multiplied by two if you multiply it by 48 you multiply you get a multiplied by four i hope it makes sense but basically the clock resolution you use inside the gate sequencer will be the clock multiplication you use in uh, the clock module that you are using Right, I have here another one, another voice just for fun. This will be this one here, some noise. Right, so I can do this. Right, and again, add some ratcheting and all sorts of different. Right, different effects. Right, and here you have also gate lengths, right? Right, so like this you can add ratchets, you can add all sorts of effects. Again, click and hold, change clock resolution. In my opinion, 12 is the best. And then multiply the clock you are using and then everything should work. And that's it. Come join our Discord for the challenges, for the giveaways. Um, cheers.